Hello again and welcome back to the workshop. I had a few other projects to do after finishing my last major build, but it's finally time for another. As simple and clean as Excalibur was, I wanted to do something with a little bit more heft this time around. And I had it suggested to do the Leviathan Axe from God of War, more commonly considered God of War 4 since it's no longer 2005. Now this weapon is already on my list of, oh geez, that's awesome, I'm totally making that, so this works out perfect for me. Uh, however, in my research of how to go about this build, which mainly consists of watching other build videos and seeing what'll work and what won't work for me, uh, I decided that there's been a bit too much attention paid to the basic axe that you start with in the game. And as dear old dad used to tell me, don't half-ass it. Now, as you can see, I'm not going to go with the fully upgraded version, which would be more like double-assing it. Quadruple-assing it obviously being getting myself a forge, but that's not really my thing. Uh, this build's going to be the uh, first upgrade of the Leviathan Axe, as you see here. Uh, cleaned up from the original with some added detail, but not so overly complex that it makes my brain hurt. Uh, so I guess you could say I'm three-quarter assing this? Yeah, let's go with that. Uh, my big challenge with this one is that I have a bunch of leftover wood uh, from prior work, and I don't want to have to go out and buy anything new, at least not wood-related. Uh, as you can see, it shouldn't be much of a problem, though I'm going to have to try and make this as clean as I can while doing some com 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Compositing, that's it. Uh, Alright, uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's going to be a bit of work since a lot of this is plywood? Yeah, a lot of this is plywood with some poplar thrown in. And, uh, ooh, what's this? Oh, some red oak. That actually works out perfect for me. Nice. So, uh, yeah. That's gonna be, that's gonna be, uh, a bit of work. But I'm gonna make this happen. So, see what I can find. Alright, now that math has decided to ruin my life yet again, I've come up with a bit of a plan for this. So, Kratos in all his gigantic godhood, is a very, very large man. I'd say well over six feet tall, but I'm guessing that this weapon is going to be about half his size, so I put it at three feet total overall. Uh, the blade is, by my estimation, going to be about 12 inches with about a nine inch length. I don't know why I put feet up there. Instead of inches, wait, did I put inches? Yeah, it's just really screwed together. Uh, let's see here. This part back here, I'm guessing it's going to be about a four foot by four foot square. That I'm just going to be able to smack back there. Uh, let's see here. These probably took the most amount of calculating, I think. It's really, really inaccurate, but I think that it's gonna work out pretty well for about a foot plus four inches for those little spires there. Uh, let's see here. Now, I found a piece of uh, red oak, if you recall, from my last bit. Uh, that turned out to be about six feet long, so I cut it down to a, about halfway point. That worked out pretty well. This is gonna work for the shaft of it. However, as you can see, there is a slight curve to it that goes one way and then another. It's uh, kind of a modern-ish look for uh, for an axe that if you even look anywhere on YouTube as far as analysis for Kratos's weapon goes, you're gonna find everybody talking about this. But, you know, I'd like to be accurate if I can, so I'm act I'm just gonna go ahead and go with the with the fireman axe curve, and so I found a couple of pieces of uh, red oak looking plywood that should work just fine for that. Uh, about a foot each for them. They're just gonna kind of smack on the side there. I'm gonna paste those down, and then I'm gonna just kind of groove this in until that takes the general curve shape 
and then swoop it back around for that as well. It's not going to be a significant curve, just a noticeable one. Uh, let's see here. Now, this game, I'm going to give it props. They made, uh, they didn't make the axe head particularly beefy. Like, except for, you know, size-wise and thickness, it's actually pretty thin. Uh, but while that works for steel, or whatever the hell this is made of in canon, it doesn't work too well for wood. So, I went ahead and found this little ditty here. A uh, piece of three-quarter inch uh, poplar wood. Uh, works just fine. And then I don't have enough for a back piece for this. <laughs> it's, uh, I got one shot at this. And then I got this piece here. That should work just fine for the little back part there. I'll just cut a nice little 4x4 four four square out of that. Uh, I got, as you can see, I got plenty of opportunities to get that right. Now, when it comes to this piece here, this center part, I think probably would be best because this is not 3 quarter inch, this is half inch wood. So I can't just stick those two together and then put a separate piece to join them together. That's just going to tilt and look weird so what i think i'm going to end up doing is for this part i'm going to use epoxy sculpt to just sort of mush around there and join those together because once that hardens it's going to make a real good snug fit there it's just going to mold right around those uh, let's see here i'll probably have to extend it a pretty significant way forward on either side just to make sure it stays there and doesn't break apart because that stuff too thin and it can be a little brittle all right so yeah i got myself a plan <sighs> and now for the fun part of executing said plan So we got nine inches at this point and perfect 12 inches down. So basically, let's see here. Math! <sighs> you know, sometimes it's best just to get out the pencil, start experimenting. Because unless you're really calculating things out carefully, you're not going to get it perfect, especially as far as these curves are concerned. But you know what? That's all right. In my book, it does not always need to be perfect, as long as it looks nice. If I were working with steel and I had a much, much uh, more rigid margin for error, perhaps I would feel more inclined, but. I'm thinking this is just fine.
You know, it's times like these that I can't help but feel like a sane person would have just gone out and bought himself a fireman's axe and just cut out a axe head <coughs> go along with it. Luckily for y'all, though, I have never bothered with all that sanity nonsense. 
So now I can begin sanding all this down to make it into this. All right.